today to talk about brachial plexus and peripheral nerve injuries caused by it to the upper extremity. At the end of the lecture, there is a small quiz that I encourage everyone to solve it and find the correct answers to those questions. And after that, even though if you get few questions wrong and you feel that you're not confident about the topic, you can email us. Okay, so now let's begin with brachial plexus. Brachial plexus is a complex topic. It becomes sometimes difficult to understand it and remember it. I am going to simplify the topic for you and you are going to learn this with me. Okay, so let's begin with the brachial plexus. We all know brachial plexus begins from C5 to T1. So your C5, C6 will come together and form the upper trunk of brachial plexus. Your C7 will form the middle trunk of the brachial plexus. And your C8 and T1 will come together and form the lower trunk of brachial plexus. Easy? Let's revise one more time. C5, C6, upper trunk. C7, middle trunk. C8, T1, lower trunk. Now each of this trunk will divide further into ventral and dorsal branches or also known as anterior and posterior. These branches will come together and form the cords of brachial plexus, that is the lateral cord, middle cord, and the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Now, which nerve arises from which cord of brachial plexus? It is always difficult to remember the nerves arising from the different cord of brachial plexus and remembering the nerve root values. But it is that much important for us to know all these things. So, Let's learn few mnemonics that will make it easy for you to remember the nerves arising from different cords of brachial plexus. So first, let's start with the lateral cord of brachial plexus. Now, to remember the nerves arising from the lateral cord of brachial plexus, I want you to remember Laila loves Majnu. Easy and funny too. On a piece of paper, I want you to write down Laila. Below it, write down loves and the last, write down majnu. So what does that stand for? That's your lateral pectoral nerve, lateral part of median nerve and musculocutaneous nerve. Isn't it easy? Lela loves majnu, lateral pectoral nerve, lateral part of median nerve and musculocutaneous nerve. So now we all know that musculocutaneous nerve arises from the lateral cord of brachial plexus. Let's proceed to the middle cord of brachial plexus. Now, what happens with your medial cord of brachial plexus? For that, I want you to remember the mnemonic M for U. Okay, so on a piece of paper, I want you to write down four times N, one after another, and write down U at the end of the M. So, in the lateral cord, we saw it was the lateral pectoral nerve. So, in the medial cord, the first nerve we are going to write down is the medial pectoral nerve. The second nerve originating from the lateral cord was lateral part of median nerve. So, here we are going to write down medial part of the median nerve. Easy. Now, for the next two M, we are going to write down medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Easy. And your U is for your ulnar nerve. Easy to remember. Medial pectoral nerve. Medial part of median nerve. Medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Ulnar nerve. Let's proceed to the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Okay. So, the last nerve that was originating from the medial cord of brachial plexus was our ulnar nerve. So, that is our mnemonic for the posterior cord. Okay. So, the nerves arising from the posterior cord of brachial plexus are upper subscapular nerve, lower subscapular nerve, nerve to latissimus dorsi, axillary nerve, and radial nerve. Easy. So, supposedly, a patient has a difficulty while extending his elbow. Which muscle is responsible for the extension? Triceps. Triceps is supplied by radial nerve. Radial nerve originates from the 
posterior cord of brachial plexus. Similarly, let's take another example. Patient has difficulty with abduction of shoulder. Which muscle is responsible for shoulder abduction? Deltoid. Deltoid is supplied by axillary nerve. Axillary nerve originates from the posterior cord of brachial plexus. Easy. Now, whenever there is an injury at any level of the brachial plexus that might be your branches or cords or individual nerve, your peripheral nerve injury results. Now, the injury can be due to different reasons. Okay. It can be due to compression or it can be a trauma. So now, what happens with the peripheral nerve injuries? With the peripheral nerve injury, the latency increases and the nerve conduction velocity decreases. Right? You may find a motor loss, a sensory loss. So now, what are the different types of nerve? Injuries that are occurring in your upper extremity. Before that, I want you to tell me which nerve arises from the ligament of strutter. Median nerve. Very good. Which nerve arises from the two heads of pronator teres? I want you to find out the answer for this. Which nerve arises from arcade of fauche? Yes. Now let's proceed to a few common questions due to the peripheral nerve injuries. A patient is unable to do a hitchhike sign. Which nerve is injured? Posterior introsious nerve. Very good. A patient is unable to do an okay sign with the tip to tip. Instead, he does with a pulp to pulp. Which nerve is injured? Anterior introsious nerve. Very good. Patient has difficulty in extending a wrist. A patient has a wrist drop. Radial love. Okay. Partial claw hand. With difficulty to extend the lateral two fingers. Sorry, the medial two fingers. Unland nerve. Very good. Now. There is a quiz for you to solve. I encourage all of you to write down the answers in the comment box. And if you still have any difficulty, please email us. Thank you.